A few days ago, I stuck my neck out. I was early at coming out and disagreeing with Ben Shapiro on his take about the United Healthcare situation. I didn't like that he was trying to frame this as a left versus right situation. And I pointed out that his comments down below completely disagreed with him. And he's continuing to dig his heels in and trying to make this, it wasn't, it didn't work that he was making this a left versus right because he read his comments and realized that the right was agreeing with the left on the health insurance issues. But he did make a pretty good point on his recent podcast. He said that violence is not the answer to this, that conversation and politics and voting the right people in is how you can get these problems solved. So I'm gonna play that clip real quick here. This has been making the case that violence is not an answer to our problems. This is a clip in which Tucker Carlson calls the United States evil for having dropped the atomic bomb on Hiroshima and Nagasaki in 1945, ending World War II. Hold on, sorry, this isn't the right one. Um, I'll let that play while I find the right clip here. And then suggest that anyone who would justify that is also evil, which is a very traditionally left-wing perspective. It is not traditionally a particularly right-wing perspective because most people on the conservative side of the aisle tend to believe that America is a force for good in the world. And as we'll discuss, it turns out that dropping the atomic bomb on Japan was necessary for ending World War II and likely saved millions of lives, both American and Japanese. I missed that part. Let's just go back a little bit. What was he saying about the Japanese? That dropping the atomic bomb on Japan was necessary for ending World War II and likely saved millions of lives, both American and Japanese. Is that Ben saying that? I'm really confused. I'll let, the, I'll let that keep playing while I look at the real clip. I love, by the way, that people on my side, I'll just say, I'll just admit it, on the right, you know, have spent the last 80 years defending, dropping nuclear weapons on civilians. Like, are you joking? Right. That's just like prima facie evil. Yeah. If you can't, well, if we hadn't done that, then this, that, the other thing, that was actually a great savings life. No, it's wrong to drop nuclear weapons on people. And if you find yourself arguing that it's a good thing to drop nuclear weapons on people, then you are evil. Like, it's it's not a it's not a tough one, right? Is right. that a hard call for you? It's not a hard call for me. So... With that in mind, like, why would you want nuclear weapons? It's like just a mindless, childish sort of intellectual exercise to justify, like, oh, no, it's really good because someone else will get it. How about no? How about, like, spending all of your effort to prevent this from happening? Why, why are we talking about how many lives it would save? It's just wrong to drop the bomb? Well, no, actually. If you end up saving more lives than are cost by the dropping of the atomic bomb, then it is morally justified to drop the atomic bomb. And that happens to be the reality of the situation. I sincerely apologize. I am having the darndest time finding that clip. Uh, I'll let this one play while I keep looking for that. About face tonight from Anthem Blue Cross Blue Shield, reversing its plan to put time limits on anesthesia care in three states. Guys, I found it, I found it. Okay, let's go. It turns out that healthcare in the United States is a giant cluster F. Everyone knows this. It is a mix of massive government subsidization, massive government regulation, and then private healthcare companies who are attempting to navigate all of that. Yeah, it's the worst of both worlds. It's the worst of capitalism and it's the worst of socialism. And one of the big questions that you should always ask in a quasi-market system is why companies are choosing United Healthcare. And the answer is because United Healthcare is cheaper for the companies. Is he gonna ask why? And why aren't companies getting better healthcare for their employees? Because it turns out- Stop, that's not the question you should be asking. The question you should be asking is why are companies getting healthcare for their employees to begin with? The company should have nothing to do with it. This is a ball and chain around employees. Once you've paid your max out of pocket for a year, within like the first three or four months, then for the next eight months, you don't have to pay anything out of pocket. And so, and so therefore you're more incentivized to stick with your employer. And second, you aren't gonna try and be entrepreneurial if you know quitting your job and going and trying something new is going to mean that you don't have health insurance. Health insurance being attached to your employer is a scam. There's no reason why it should be attached to your employers. It would make more sense to have your car insurance attached to your employer. That sounds crazy, right? but at least you need your car to drive to work. So it would make more sense to have it tied to your employer than your health insurance. Now, there aren't a lot of other companies that are significantly better than United Healthcare. Why? Because of the regulatory environment that surrounds health insurance companies. The profit margins on health insurance companies, by the way, are not 50%. They're more like 3% on average, two to 3% on average. And it turns out that large parts of that are because of the bizarre subsidization of particular parts of the healthcare industry and the bizarre regulation of other parts of the healthcare industry. The American health insurance system is basically a Frankensteinian monster crafted by the conjunction of, of politics and business. And 
it ends up wasting an enormous amount of money on administrative overhead. It ends up with ugly negotiations between patients and insurance companies over what sort of doctors they can get. The history of the American healthcare system is... You argued that Obamacare was terrible because why? Because you didn't want the government choosing who your doctor was. You didn't want somebody else choosing who your doctor was. Now suddenly the health insurance is choosing who our doctors are. It's really complex. It, it is also really difficult to untangle because it also has disparate results in a wide variety of areas. So for example, if you have cancer, you would prefer to be in the United States. If you have a broken leg, you might prefer to be in a nationalized healthcare system depending on how the care is getting rationed. Like emergency care in nationalized healthcare systems sometimes is quite good because again, basic care happens with alacrity. But if you have any sort of complex problem, you're not gonna wanna be there. You're gonna wanna be in the United States, which is why you see people from foreign countries like Canada and the UK traveling to the United States if they have cancer. Okay, a lot of this is really complicated and that's sort of the point. But Ben, that is because they know they can get more money from the insurance companies. The reason we are charged more for medicine in the US, it's because insurance companies are subsidizing that. Now, how are they subsidizing it? By higher premiums. It's always the customer that has to pay. Yeah, a lot of this is really complicated and that's sort of the point. There's a piece by Alicia Finley talking about how Obamacare helped exacerbate all of these problems. Quote, Obamacare's perverse effects are fueling public rage against insurers and support for a single payer system that would eliminate them. Mr. Obama, Barack Obama, who pushed Obamacare, of course, and Peter Orzag, the law's chief architect, must be smiling. Orzag, who is now CEO of the financial services firm Lazard, has dined out on advising health insurance on mergers he said were spurred by the law's regulations. The U.S. is spending $2 trillion more on health care than it was back in 2010, but Americans are not any healthier. Now, again, one problem is that having insurance doesn't change people's behavior. It causes them to use more care. Medicaid beneficiaries, for example, rush to the emergency room for non-emergencies because they are covered by Medicaid. They don't have deductibles or co-pays. Also, the Medicaid reimbursement rates are significantly lower than United Healthcare. For what Ben is missing here is that when you don't have health insurance or you can't afford the co-pays, is you don't go to the hospital when you should. So that's the trade-off. We'll have a little more people go to the hospital when they shouldn't, and we'll have a little more people go to the hospital when they should. Not accept Medicaid. And then Obamacare expanded eligibility because states have tried to hold down Medicaid costs by reducing reimbursements. Patients with exchange plans are not faring much better. Affordable Care Act plan networks include on average only 40% of local physicians and 21% of those employed by hospitals. Insurers right. That's because the hospitals know they can make more money by going through the insurance, which means they know they can charge more from an insurance company, which means they're charging you more. They're charging the customer more because our premiums will be increased. Those are narrowing coverage to keep down costs because they sort of have to in many cases. They're also hiking deductibles, which this year averaged $5,241 for a typical plan. Then it, it turns out there are not a lot of easy solves for a complex system. And herein lies the actual problem. The easy solve is to not have the system be so complex.